All right. So after this giant mess in Afghanistan, what's the response from the White House? Boy, did we screw up, but look how we fixed it. And talk about fixed. This is a mess so screwed up it will have reverberations for many years, which means the person responsible probably won't see the end result. But still, the White House will say, look at this humanitarian feat of strength. It's more impressive than Joe protecting us from corn pop. <laughs> But we got out 100,000 plus people before the deadline the Taliban wanted. Yeah, Spirit Airline has nothing on us. It's a weird contrast. On one hand, we're evacuating thousands of Afghans. On the other, we say the Taliban's changed. So why is everyone fleeing if they changed? So do we have anything to fear from the Taliban other than their fashion sense? They're new and improved, like an Apache helicopter we left behind. Sure, they just banned music and killed a folk singer. It's the terror version of Footloose. <laughs> I guess the Taliban prefers their pleasing sounds to come from goats. So are things changing? Well, check out this anchorman reading the news. Their Taliban censors don't even bother to stand off camera. You can tell the anchor's really looking forward to a bright future under his new leaders. <laughs> Here's a tip, buddy. Don't play any music. This ain't CNN, where when you screw up, you get a vacation. Hey. <laughs> but I'm not one to point fingers. Or am I? Greg points the fingers. Starring fingers. <laughs> yes, it's time once again to point fingers. After all, that's why we have them. It's why humans are in charge instead of seals. They don't have fingers, Emily. <laughs> they have fins. People say, Greg, it's too soon for that. That's what they said about the premiere of this show, and I didn't listen. But if we weren't calling out this BS, then who will? And think of all the great finger pointers in history. Some of our greatest co coaches pointed fingers. Those are coaches. So did every member of the Four Tops. Your mom at the aquarium. Look, a whale, a whale. Every doctor about to do a prostate exam. <laughs> Even the image is arousing. And let's not forget everyone's favorite alien. That's right, he pointed a finger. And what of Uncle Sam? A great finger pointer. And of course, the greatest finger pointer of all, God. <laughs> so back to this mess. You only deserve credit if you do a thorough job of cleaning it up. But if you left hundreds of Americans behind, you didn't clean it up. It's like how a guy cleans up after an all-night poker game. You threw out the beer bottles and the pizza boxes and say, you're good. Now, you still got to get all those stains out of the rug before your wife gets home, or at least move the sofa over it. This isn't nitpicking. This is about American lives. And if you left them behind, you got to fix it. And maybe our government is and not telling us, fine. But consider the people in charge, the ones who have a history of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. No one's blaming the troops who don't make the decisions and are in danger. We're blaming the politicians who made decisions and then went on vacation. Meanwhile, the White House and the media will redefine your outrage against Biden as directed against the military. If you're mad about the disastrous pullout, Joe pretends you're mad that we're ending a war. His entire speech was bait and switch. I love how he brags about the withdrawal while also blaming Trump. So it's a success unless it's a failure and then that's on Trump. No, the decision made by Trump was pretty sound. It's Biden's follow through, follow through that we're all pissed off about. And we aren't pissed at the military, except for generals pushing wokeness while saying the Taliban has no chance. We're upset with the administration who, like a drunk hiker lost in the woods, chose the worst possible path and put everyone at risk. Looking back, it takes a specific genius to make that many mistakes. It's like flipping a coin and getting heads 100 times in a row. How can you be that consistent? It's impossible for things to go wrong this perfectly, unless it was baked into the plan. You abandon an air base before evacuating Americans. You hand over a pile of weaponry to our enemies, making the Taliban better armed than the NRA. You have the president telling us everything would be fine, knock on wood. Yeah, knock on wood, only if you can find John Kerry's face. <laughs> Talk about a drastic escalation in the use of knock on wood. Usually I save that for hoping the cafeteria still has soup. <laughs> then you see Afghans falling from planes. But hey, that was five days ago, remember that? So 100 times shorter than Russia Gate. An amazing answer. One I wouldn't use when you're arrested or caught cheating on your spouse. Then we give a list of Americans to the Taliban. I'm still unsure what that means, but I doubt they're going to become pen pals. 
Then we get 13 dead from a homicidal bomber. Who was checking that bomber in? Was it the Taliban? It matters when you then hear that they offered control of Kabul to Biden, who declined it. He probably thought, hell, I can't control my eyelids. How am I going to control an airport? So he wanted the Taliban to have more control of Afghanistan than the Taliban wanted. And then as the caskets of our dead were unloaded from a plane at Dover Air Force Base, Joe Biden checked his watch. He took 36 hours to call back Boris Johnson, but suddenly he's in a hurry. Look, I won't point any fingers here because if I were Joe Biden, I'd be checking my watch too. How much longer do I have to do this job, he's wondering. Believe me, so are we. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She talks faster than an auctioneer who has to pee. Outnumbered co-host Emily Campagno. The buck stopped here, and he brought his hair. Radio host Buck Sexton. He's got a face for radio and a wardrobe for the blind. Fox News radio host Jimmy Thalia. And she's like Lance Armstrong, really successful, but cheats on drug tests. Fox News contributor Cat Tip. All right, Buck, I'm going to go to you first because you served in the CIA in Afghanistan and your hair served in NAM, right? <laughs> True. In <laughs> World War II. Yes. So, what do you make of this botched, this botched whatever you want to call it? Well, we're saying it's botched now because it is, and we saw it, and they couldn't hide it from us, in part because the Taliban doesn't have the technology or the ability to shut down. People were texting me in real time about what was going on on the ground there. They were sending photos around. So we saw what a mess it was. It was clearly not planned. But just give this a few days. Right. Because now that we're at the point where we're out, now there's still 100-plus Americans on the ground, the narrative is going to switch very quickly to Joe Biden is the guy that got things done. He's mm -hmm. the one that made the tough call here. And the fact that they were talking about a 300,000-person-plus army that evaporated, that we lost soldiers in, Af uh, in Afghanistan, that we had all the disasters we've seen will be quickly forgotten. And they're already, you started to see some blips on CNN about the Insurrection Commission. Right. Okay. And how they're subpoenaing the Trump family records. They're going to move past this as quickly as possible. And the new narrative is going to be gaslighting on a, a thermonuclear scale. It will be the Moab of gaslighting from the Biden administration. <laughs> you, um, you were in the CIA. How did we get... I love the fact that Joe Biden will get accolades after being a VP for eight years while uh, you know, presiding over Afghanistan. But why was the, why was the intelligence so wrong? Well, because the people in the intelligence community who tell those in charge what they want to hear are right. the ones who get to keep talking to yep. the people yeah. in charge, the ones that get into the Oval Office, the ones that write for the for the PDB regularly. It's just like every other bureaucracy or corporate. You know, the, the, the butt kissers essentially get promoted and move up, and the good people often feel like they can't handle it, and so they leave and get on late-night TV. That's what happens. Ooh, was that a jab at your own self? <laughs> Something like that. Yes, yes, yes. I uh, know, but you're right. It's like it's, it, inside every massive major project, you need to make it sound like it's going well, mm -hmm. Emily, so that they don't stop the project. So you find data that supports it. For example, you know, they sabotaged 27 Humvees, and they don't forget to tell you there were like 27,000 of them or something like that. What do you mean? Where, do you, where does your brain rest at this point? Well, I Look, bottom line, we have a commander in chief who abandoned Americans. Mm -hmm. He abandoned allies and orphans and women and working dogs to meet an arbitrary deadline that he set. He surrendered all of these lives and like billions of dollars worth of equipment to the Taliban and had the audacity to do a victory lap today, mm -hmm. touting it as this amazing, you know, airlift is happening. The airlift occurs after a, a hurricane. It doesn't occur in the vacuum of a Taliban takeover that you created. He blamed everyone else on the planet but himself, including our Afghan allies who lost 66,000 of their own people alongside our 2,500. And then we lost 13 more under his watch. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of watch, as you pointed out, he checks his watch each time a coffin comes out of the plane during a dignified transfer. Mm -hmm. And we are supposed to think that this person has the, the gravitas, the, the anything, the modicum of responsibility needed to hold this office. So to me, on at, at this final day of a 20-year war, other than 
endless gratitude for everyone who served and honoring every life who was sacrificed, who did not die in vain during those 20 years, I personally feel nothing but ashamed that that person is my president. Mm. Strong emotion. Mm. Now, Jimmy, your jacket is almost as bad as the withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> but I like how you matched your shoes with it. I, I committed. Yes. You go all the way yes. in. Where's the ice cream truck? It's, it's around the block. Yes, I, exactly. You didn't tell me Biden was going to be here. <laughs> Where's the ice cream? There you um, go. I do feel on some level you guys are being a little harsh to Joe Biden. Okay. What? If you take like a 20,000 foot view of this, I mean, other than foreign policy, COVID, the border, inflation, gas prices, unity, race relations, the guy's doing a pretty good job. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, other than everything in the country, the guy's done a great job. No, this is embarrassing. And the brazen nature in which they lie to the public, it's all, it really does bother me because on some level they're talking to us as if we'll forget, number one, which is pretty condescending. And number two, they're doing it with the assumption that the media is always going to be there for them. And we have learned that the media did try to create some distance between themselves and this because it was horrific. Mm -hmm. But it didn't stop them from doing what they do. Like Jen Psaki gets out there every day. Yeah. If Jen Psaki did press for the Titanic, she would blame the iceberg on climate change and tell you the evacuation went great. Yes. It's like everybody's fine, other yeah, than Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio. He's dead over yeah, there. And there's no pre conditions with the iceberg. No, no, <laughs> you don't have to negotiate. We're talking no with the iceberg logs. right now. <laughs> uh, we're going to like, you know, we're going to kick yeah. I'm going to just stop that joke there. But I know, but to, to one point of the whole thing, um, and you were saying this earlier about the have it both ways mentality of Biden. OK, on one end, he wants you to believe it was successful. On the other end, yes, he wants you to believe this is what Trump did. Mm -hmm. Now, if that is to be the case, we're going to take him at his word. Joe Biden has rescinded every one of Donald Trump's policies through executive order. Why is this the one policy he kept right. if it was so bad? Exactly. OK, he screwed this up. Joe Biden sucks. Bottom line. <laughs> no, but that is such a great point. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jimmy just exceeded Emily on red meat points yeah. by saying that. Is that true? Yeah, no, that's true. So, uh, Kat, it's good to, I'm, I'm glad that Hot Topic was open today and you were able to get your outfit. I look so, oh. I look so good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I look really, really good. Thank you. She does know. And I just want to be clear, it was Forever 31. <laughs> You guys, no, you look amazing. I, look, great. You know, Jimmy, you're right. You're far more attractive than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you got, this she is won the, that this round. This is the kind of debate we need to be having. <laughs> <laughs> you're slightly more attractive than Jimmy. Uh, mm, well, now you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I walked right into that. She set us up. All right, we're not airing this uh, episode. Oh. All right, I look so good. Last, last All right. <laughs> Aside from how breathtakingly attractive that I am, uh, yeah, this is horrible. The whole speech was about how we can't nation build, which is something I agree with. Right. But that's also something that I've always believed, yes. which is very opposite to Joe Biden's, you know, decades long campaign for nation building. When did he change? He maybe had something to do with it there. And yeah. I just, I agree with Buck. I want to, I would love to see a couple people get fired mm -hmm. because we can't nation build, doesn't work. We knew that sooner than 20 years. So who are all these yes men? They're at the, the heads of all these companies, defense companies. They're on TV telling us what, what we should do. I'd like to see them get fired. And we cancel people for literally everything else except stuff that really matters. So let's cancel some of these people. I was in Afghanistan 10 years ago. Every senior level military and bureaucrat in the federal government you talked to was like, we figured it out. <laughs> We've got it. We know the next yeah. 12 months. And every person you talked to who was on their fifth tour or their seventh tour and knew the country well said, no chance. Yes, exactly. No chance. That was a decade ago. That is so depressing when you think about the amount of lives and blood yep. treasure lost in 10 years. It's, it makes you sick to your stomach. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.